Welcome to episode 185 of Your Career Podcast. I'm Jane Jackson, your career management coach on a mission to make careers guidance accessible to all who need it. Now, this is the time of year when I like to reflect. The lead up to Christmas was exciting, wasn't it? I hope that the holiday season is good for you and that you're having a relaxing time with your family and friends wherever you are in the world. Are you enjoying some time off to rest and recharge? This is the time of year when I like to reflect on many things and to express gratitude for the good things in life and also thanks for the challenges I've experienced as each challenge has helped me to grow as an individual and as a professional. So what about you? What have been some of the happy times and some of the challenges that you've experienced in 2019? You know, I celebrated my 60th birthday this year. Yes, I know it's hard to believe that I'm now 60 and I still feel like I'm 30. I'm still learning, growing and loving the experiences that life has given me. And I believe that keeping a curious and open view of the world helps to keep me young at heart and always being open to learn keeps me on top of my profession as a career coach, mentor and LinkedIn trainer. So for all of you out there who are concerned about your age, let me tell you that age is not a barrier to living your best life. Aging is inevitable for all of us, no matter what age you are, but growing old is your choice. And my choice is to have a youthful outlook always. You know, I also became a grandmother this year, which is very exciting. And what I love to see is the potential in a baby's eyes to watch my daughter and my son-in-law become amazing parents and be so full of wonder for the incredible experiences that lay ahead for their son. What an amazing time. Now, in a few days time, we'll be heading into 2020. Are you crystal clear on your vision for the new year? Year? If you're not sure, visit thecareersacademy.online where you will find my career clarity pack. Complete the valuable exercises in my career clarity pack and take control of the next step in your life and your career. Now, on with the podcast interview. I have a very special interview for you today, and I'm honored to be interviewing a very talented lady, Vivica von Rosen. Vivica von Rosen is the co-founder and chief visibility officer at Vengresso, the largest provider of full-spectrum digital sales transformation solutions. Known as the LinkedIn expert, she's author of the best-selling book, LinkedIn Marketing, An Hour a Day. She's a contributing expert to LinkedIn's official sales and marketing blogs and their sophisticated marketers' guides, and is often called on to contribute to publications like Fast Company, Forbes, Money, Selling power, entrepreneur, social media, and many, many more. Vivica takes a LinkedIn and social selling experience over the past 12 years and transforms it into engaging and informational digital sales strategies, tactics, and tools, including personal branding, social selling training, and content for sales. Vivica is truly an inspiration, and you will love this episode. And so let's welcome the very amazing Vivica <laughs> von Rosen to the show. Hello. Welcome. <laughs> Hi, everyone. How are you? Oh, gosh. Well, you know, you're, you're over in the States. I'm in yep. Sydney. It's a, it's, uh. a, it's a very sunny Thursday morning in Sydney. And so I guess you're winding up for the day where you are. It's a very overcast uh, Wednesday afternoon over here. Uh -huh. I, you win. I would much rather be in Sydney right now. <laughs> Well, it's still a little bit chilly, but I'm talking to Vivica, the one and only Vivica. So I'm very, very excited. Thank you so much for coming on the show. Oh, my pleasure. And, and before we begin, let's start off with what I always start off with all of my clients. What were your early career aspirations, Vivica, when you were a little girl? Yeah. So, you know, I didn't know a career like this existed because it didn't way, way back then. Um, but, you know, I, I won an award speaking when I was seven years old and I was the youngest one, I guess, vaguely. I remember I was the youngest one and they sent a, like a film crew out and everything. And I thought, this is great. Of course, back in 19, um, you know, if you wanted to speak, it meant 
you were a teacher, they were barely motivational speakers back then, or you were, you know, a professor, but there wasn't really, or you were an actress. Um, and, uh, you know, so I thought, okay, I'm going to go the way of the actress. And then when I went into high school, um, the, the drama teacher, it was actually really sad, was killed along with, um, several uh, uh, of, of our high school people in a, in a accident that the bus got turned over and they didn't replace her for two years. So by the time they finally found someone to replace her, I was like, okay, I'm not going to be an actress. Um, and then I went on, you know, and, and got my various degrees and various useless. <laughs> <laughs> I, mean, I, I got, well, no, I shouldn't say that. I got my first degree in, in uh, as an English, as an English major. That's not and, a useless yes, degree. No, it's not. No, it's not useless. It, it, it was somewhat useless, um, according to my parents who really wanted me to like make money. And, and we all know, um, you have to change an English degree into something in order, <laughs> in order, but, but I got my master's in Native American women's autobiography. So that was Ooh. super, super functional uh, degree there. And then I started my PhD in women's studies. And it was funny because my, my advisor actually cornered me and said, you know, Vivica, you're not a lesbian. You don't hate men <laughs> and you don't like politics, office politics. You don't, you don't play them. You're not going to do very well in the university system <laughs> being a, a women's studies major. And so, you know, there went that idea. So I decided to go, instead of like becoming a, a, a getting my doctorate in women's studies, um, I decided to go move in with my boyfriend in Miami and, and fly hang gliders for a while. So that <laughs> launched my career a little bit to the left for a while. And then about 15 years ago, um, no, 2019 now about 13 years ago I discovered LinkedIn and I really I was just using it within my own business as a as a business tool as a networking tool and um one of our associations that we were a member of heard that I was t teaching LinkedIn and social media and asked me to come speak at their big national association, international association in, uh, at the Waldorf Astoria. So my first speaking gig after being seven years old was at the Waldorf Astoria <laughs> in their big ballroom in front of like a bunch of million and billionaires. Um, and that was, that kind of launched my speaking career and I started doing it more and more and more. And then, you know, now here we are however many years later, I'm not saying, and, you know, I get to do a career speaking, but social media obviously didn't exist back then. And, and really the career that I have now didn't exist back then. So you just got to leave your options open. You never know what's around the corner. Well, you, you've certainly made a great start at the age of seven for your Spurs. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> There's just a small 40 ish year gap in there, but other than that, <laughs> but you must have been brave and you must have been an extra extrovert <laughs> from a very young age, you know, to really enjoy speaking and getting you up. Know, and you're so young. Mm. I, 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 people say that. I've never been afraid of that. I'm way more, I'm, so I'm actually an introvert, interestingly. Um, I would much rather, and I have gotten on stage in front of 5,000 people than walk into a, a small room of people where I don't know anyone. Like I'd much rather speak on stage to 50,000 people. Um, so there's just, we, we all have natural gifts. There are some things, I hate cold calling. I would much rather stand on stage and talk to 50,000 people than pick up a phone and call someone I don't know. So it's ironic that I, you know, I now <laughs> have a career in sales training essentially, um, but it's, teaching people how they, you know, how they can move forward in their businesses without having to pick up uh, uh, a phone and call someone that you don't know. Yeah, you know, I mean, it's interesting. I feel very much the same way as well. Yeah. I really love public speaking. Yeah. A group. But when I'm in a small group, I don't want to be the center of attention. If I go right. into a party, I'm just, I'm hanging about, yeah. uh, back and then thinking, I find one good person to talk to. I could talk exactly. to the poor person that gets stuck with me all <laughs> <laughs> it's true but when and I think a lot of people yeah and I think a lot of people feel that way and and that's why you know that's how I try to teach people to use LinkedIn it's like it's not you're not learning any new magical formula you're just using LinkedIn to teach 
to help you do what you already do, maybe just a little bit better, a little bit easier, you know, mm-hmm. warming up those relations before you walk into the room or pick up the phone. That's right. Now, can we just backtrack a little bit? Because yeah. I'm so fascinated by career transitions. Yes. You've, you've made some very, very successful <laughs> career transitions, which would be so inspiring for anyone who's feeling a little bit stuck in their careers. Because having done a bit of stalking on LinkedIn, Uh-oh. of course, where else would one stalk other people? people. <laughs> you, I knew I should have taken off some of those old jobs. No, but it makes it so interesting <laughs> because it's the rich tapestry of life, Vivica, I reckon, because you were in sales, in automotive yep. sales in the mm-hmm. early days. You're a computer consultant. You yeah. were a lecturer at university and yep. a teacher's assistant. And then you got into marketing and you were a marketing yep. director. Now, every transition, that's quite varied, quite varied, wouldn't you say? <laughs> sales, there, there was the couple stores oh. I owned in there too. And yeah. <laughs> Okay, so obviously you are a master of reinvention. You are not afraid, even as an introvert, to give things a go. And so when you made your transitions into different industries and different job functions, what was going through your mind? Was there anything that held you back or did you just leap? Um, Yeah, it was usually life situations <laughs> that kind of caused me to, to, to have to take that leap. I, I'm kind of I, listening to that. I'm, I'm like the Lady Gaga of, of career transition. Um, <laughs> I, you know, a lot of times it was, I get bored very easily. Um, and so I would just get to a point in my, my job. Um, cause I never until this, until what I'm doing right now, which again has only been like the past 14 years, I never saw my whole future laid out in front of me and say car sales. I thought maybe as a professor, but again, once my, my advisor sat me down and said, nah, this isn't for you. Um, I went, okay, now what? And so, you know, as circumstances came up and I was like, oh, that sounds interesting. Let's give it a try. It, it really was just, there wasn't, I hate to say it, a whole lot of st- strategical th- or strategy um, around my transitions. It was just really, here's an opportunity. Here's something new. You might be good at this. Give it a try. And so, yeah, from selling lasers to selling cars <laughs> to, you know, running various businesses to running, a, you know, a, an executive. I mean, it was it was really just, okay, let's give that a try. And also I had to pay the mortgage. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but, you know, but there's a common thread, though, because it's yeah. sound, even though it was quite organic the way your, your yeah. career has grown, there's been a common thread because all of those roles that you've held actually led you very nicely into the position yeah. that you are in now because as a lecturer being you know, obviously yeah. a subject matter expert, that's why you can yeah. do it. As a teaching assistant, it's yeah. helping others to learn yeah. and grow. Being in sales, regardless of what yeah. the product is, it means you yes. understand the product so that you can make it a solution for the customer. Yes. Exactly. Exactly. Right. It's almost like your life and, you know, just giving it a go has prepared yourself for where you are today. And so the last 14 years, amazing trajectory on LinkedIn, just incredible. Yeah. Yeah. That's been fortunate. (laughs) And so now as, as the LinkedIn expert, okay. um, And when you transitioned into Mm -hmm. social media, because, you know, you're a social media consultant for a long time as well. Yes. When was the moment when you thought, ah, I'm going to focus on LinkedIn because that's the place to be? Yeah. You know, I started with LinkedIn uh, because there was no Facebook or Twitter back then. This is 2005, 2006. So uh, Facebook came around to the public consumption uh, back in 2007. And then of course, Twitter very quickly after that. So when I started, it was only LinkedIn. Um, And then uh, Mari Smith is a friend of mine and she was, you know, and then she was doing uh, Facebook and she was doing it really well. So I played around in the other social media platforms for a while. And there was a request to teach, you know, all social media, you had to be kind of a generalist. Um, And honestly, back then, most of the time you were spending people convincing that social media was what telling people what social media was convincing them that it was actually a thing that was going to be useful for them and maybe giving them one or two tips about how to use social media I mean it wasn't nearly as complicated and sophisticated as these that as it is these days where you really do have to be an expert in in 
not only on one platform, but kind of a niche within that platform in order to be successful in many cases uh, on social. So, um, so anyway, I played around in that for a while. And then it was really that it was like, I can't be everything for everybody when it comes to social. And I was already teaching the, the importance of having a niche and of um, positioning yourself within that niche as a, as a, you know, as, as a thought leader or as a trusted advisor. And um, it just made sense to me. LinkedIn, I, I've always been more in the B2B market and it just, as a tool, it made sense to me. And I always used to joke back then, of course, things have changed massively, but I'm a little graphically impaired. Like I can't create good <laughs> graphics to save my life. And this is before Canva and before all, PicMonkey and all the great, you know, graphics tools out there. This is like when you had to have a PhD in, in Photoshop in order to do a good image. And I, that wasn't me. Like that wasn't me. And, and when you had to spend like $2,000 to get a, you know, to get a, a video studio up and running that I wasn't going to invest that kind of money. So LinkedIn was text. I mean, it was, it, 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 it suited me. Um, of course that's all changed, but, uh, the tools out there have changed as well for us. Mm -hmm. Thank goodness. Everything is so Thank much goodness. cheaper. Yes. You know, interesting. Yes. You're talking about the graphics back in the day. I don't want yeah. to say which decade it was. I know, right? <laughs> my, my, my first degree was in graphic design and technical oh. illustration. And I was See? going to become a graphic designer. Right. And I went back to Hong Kong where I grew up. I realized yeah. I'm not very good at it. So <laughs> now for Canva and pick my and everything else that's out there and clipping exactly. because our lives are so much easier and so oh, every yeah. entrepreneur everyone whether it's b2b or b2c if you want to create yeah. graphics um our life is so much easier because of yeah. software as a service all these SaaS oh yeah um offerings are fantastic exactly and so, yeah, what, what about you now with with your linkedin yes. trajectory trajectory yeah. for the car um you started out, you know, training people on LinkedIn, yep. how to use it, B2B. Yep, yep, but then yep. now you're, a, you're an international speaker. So yeah. tell us a little bit about how your LinkedIn career has progressed too. Sure. And again, it was like a lot of it was luck um, or you can say seeing the opportunity and making the most of it. So um, one of the things that massively changed my career traje trajectory, or at least gave it some oomph, was the book. So um, at the time, LinkedIn had a really cool little app. <laughs> Back in the day when LinkedIn let you use third-party tools, it had a cool little <laughs> no app more. that would, right, no more, no, <laughs> you shall get restricted. Um, but it pulled in your, your blog post. So I was writing a blog for my old company called LinkedIn to Business, which also got good SEO. Um, and it, you know, it had pulled my blog in. And so um, the folks over at Wiley were looking for someone to write. Uh, the first book they wanted someone to write was The LinkedIn Companion. Um, so they actually contacted me about that. And then there was some upheaval within the company. And then they gave me a new editor who was amazing, William Neeb. And, um, and he said, well, how about doing the, one of the hour a day series? You know, you're, have you heard of it? I'm like, yeah, my friend Mari did the Facebook and my friend Andrea did the, the, um, the part of the Facebook. So, you know, so then it was like a natural fit. And plus Dave had already gotten um, for dummies. So yeah. I, would, <laughs> I would have liked for dummies, but they gave it to somebody else. Um, but that was huge because it was a real book. Now, mind you, what you don't know, well, you may or may not know about me. I, I, I don't know how deeply you stalked me, but um, <laughs> I'm a failed science fiction writer. So I had written like like two or three science fiction novels that never, never got published, but I, I knew how to write a book. I, I had the, the stick to to write a book. So the fact that I actually had a business book published put me on a whole different level. Um, plus I still, you know, getting the Twitter handle LinkedIn expert and the LinkedIn handle LinkedIn expert and the Facebook handle LinkedIn expert and the YouTube handle LinkedIn expert mm -hmm. didn't hurt. Um, so, so those things. And then because of the book, I was invited to speak at Social Media Marketing World, which is, you know, pretty huge in the social media world. And then Inbound and, and Content Marketing World and all the, you know, all the big um, uh, conferences that, that the social media world attends. Um, and so those things helped to project me. I, you know, I was very fortunate on, I had a Twitter chat back in the day. I think we finally... 
I, I turned it over to somebody else and I think they finally released it. But for almost 10 years, we had um, the hashtag, or 12 years, I guess, we had the hashtag LinkedIn chat. And so I actually got a couple speaking gigs internationally through that. And in the end, it's kind of who you know, but that, that really, I think the book, the speaking gig, I mean, uh, you know, social media marketing world, those, those two things back in 2011, um, 2011, 2012 made, made a huge impact into where my business went because then I started getting asked by, you know, Forbes and CNN and, and Buzzfeed and whoever to, to, for quotes and for articles and things like that. So that's right. Yeah. Because, I mean, yeah. you're, you're absolutely ubiquitous. <laughs> Fast Company, Forbes, Money Magazine, Entrepreneur Magazine, CNN, Selling Power, Social Media <laughs> Examiner. Ah, oh, I need to take a break. And, <laughs> and also, the other book you wrote was yeah, LinkedIn, yeah. 101 Ways to Rock it's Your rock Personal, your personal brand. brand. Yeah. Fantastic. You know what I thought so smart that you did was your social media handles, all of them, yeah. LinkedIn expert, great for SEO. So yeah. To remember, and we can find you on Twitter and Instagram and everywhere yeah. else just because of that. Because some people yeah. make the mistake of having different handles because someone yeah. else has taken it. So I think it's important to do that research, isn't it? Yeah. To make yeah. sure you can get the same one across all platforms with the words that you want. So yeah, you're and now LinkedIn expert. Yeah. And I remember sitting, so again, this was a third party app. I remember sitting in my office of like two, two businesses ago, um, sitting in the office. I was still doing my day job while I was, you know, building my LinkedIn career. And, um, there was an app and it just said what Twitter, you know, or what handle, what, what social media handle do you want? I already had LinkedIn expert on Twitter, but on nothing else. And I like typed it in <laughs> and it's like, okay, Ding, 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 ding. And there, at the time, there was 40 or 50 different um, sites, platforms. And so I just got all the ones that were available. Now, most of them don't exist anymore. But YouTube was one of them. Instagram was one of them. You know, Facebook was one of them. And, and as soon as LinkedIn became available, you know, I was fortunate and I grabbed it on LinkedIn. And that, that's made a huge difference. So, yeah, if you can be strategic about your Twitter or your social handles and keep them aligned, especially when you have a weird name. I mean, the other thing is if people look up Vivica, half the time it's V-I-V-I-C-A, V-I-E-C-K-A, you know, there's, so there's often misspellings of my name. And so if I didn't have LinkedIn expert, they'd never find me. How did you come up with your business name as well? Because it's Ben Grasso. So yeah. I, I know there must be something in there. There's a story <laughs> behind there, isn't there? So what's the story behind Ben Grasso? Yeah, so that was, so Ben Grasso, um, I actually formed with, uh, we've got four of us now, there's three partners and myself. And so it was literally one of those, do we call ourselves like Rev Crew? Do we call ourselves, you know, socialsellingexperts.com? Like, or do we go for a Google-like name, a made-up name? And um, so we kind of bandied it about. And I think it was Mario, who's our CEO, who actually came up with the name Vengresso. And it's a combination of Ventus, Ventus and, uh, and Ingresso, which is sales revenue, honestly. Oh. So it's, yeah, it's a, it's a mashup of sales revenue. Um, I still, you know, I still think it sounds like soup. So, uh, or, or as my friend, Mike O'Neill said, you know, it sounds maybe like a, a, a Ferrari, you know, one of the latest mm. models. I'm like, Ooh, yeah. Thank you. So, so, um, and it's funny, our, our, our competitors slash detractors were like, yeah, they're aggresso, but we've taken that on. Cause we are, we're very aggressive in the marketplace, but we don't care. That's the point. Mm. Um, but yeah, so it's a completely made up name. Um, and it's, it's been really interesting interesting practice in branding. And so this is, this is actually a good thing to talk about um, for those of you who are in, in transition and thinking about starting your own business. Like, do you go with your own name? That's a great idea if you want the business to be about you. But we very, very conscientiously went into this new company knowing that we were going to sell it. Like, not anytime soon, but we knew it couldn't be you know, it couldn't be about Mario or it couldn't be about Vivica or it couldn't be about Kurt or it couldn't be about Bernie. It had to be about not only the four founders, but it had to be about the whole company because that's how you sell a company with any kind of valuation. And so we knew we had to come up with a, with a name and it's been interesting to watch how the brand has just blown up over the past two years because you've got four very big mouths who are promoting <laughs> it, quite frankly. 
<laughs> I like the name Vingresso because you're right. It does kind of sound like a Ferrari. And it's, it's, really, yeah, like that's it's, off. it's almost like I, I can see like this puff of smoke at the end. Exactly. Like, Vingresso. <laughs> Actually, maybe we should do, I kind of, we yeah. might have to steal that for a marketing yeah, campaign. Oh, well, they, oh, oh, well, I have provided value today. Thank you, Jane. <laughs> it's a little bit like, you, you know, you know, in the old days, it was the road runner and they go. Yes, exactly. No. That's what's going on in my head. <laughs> I love that. That that's exactly what I saw in my head too. Yeah. I'm gonna hit up oh, Bernie. He's our CMO. I'm gonna let him know about this conversation oh, after guys, we get off. All the listeners, this is where you heard it first. <laughs> this is where you heard it first. Credit to Jane. <laughs> I just cartoons, I think, as a young child. Okay, so when it comes to LinkedIn, yes. because if there's anything to be learned about LinkedIn, it's in your head. What would you say for job seekers in particular, because yeah, this, yeah. this is uh, the um, um, majority of our listeners are job seekers, but then later, of course, it will be B2B if they start right. their own businesses. But job seekers, own businesses. What would yeah. be your top three tips for them yeah. when they start to market themselves on LinkedIn? Yes. It's a great question because it's interesting. I've, I've been in the B2B sales arena for so long, but, but, but coincidentally, um, three very, 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 very good friends of mine, well, yeah, three very good friends, we'll leave it at that, um, are all in transition. Like all of a sudden, kind of a couple of them without really wanting to be, are suddenly in transition and looking for a job later in their careers when they really thought they were going to be able to retire in three or four mm-hmm. years. Now they're looking for a, a J-O-B. Um, and, you know, they're they're just like, ah, you know, I've been on LinkedIn all this time and I've been using it for sales, but now how do I use it as a job seeker? Um, And so it's fresh in my mind because I've been working with all of them. Um, So there's a couple things that you can do. First of all, you do have to consider your LinkedIn profile to be your own personal brand and to treat it like if you were creating a website about yourself, except of course, you, you want to focus not so much on me, 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 but how can I help you? same as you would in sales. Um, but in this case, we're tweaking a little bit, like how can I help you as an employee? Um, and so just topically, um, the things above the fold on your LinkedIn profile, create a background image. So you might already have a background image that's reflective of your company. Well, if you're leaving your company, you might want to change that up. So this is where things like Canva and PicMonkey come in, right? Because you can use those tools to create background images that reflect who you're, you are, who your dreams are, who you're at, what your aspirations are. Um, and it might give people something like, especially recruiters, um, or hiring managers or business owners, it might be a place where they start to feel some kinship with you, depending on what you have up there. Um, my husband's got a picture of a hang glider and, and a motivational saying. So if there's anyone, you know, who's looking at his profile, if he was looking for a job, anyone who's looking at his profile who has that kind of flying background, you know, even though he's not looking for a pilot's job or anything like that, there, there might be that kinship or mm. if you've got a mountain vista in the background or if you've got computer software in the background or whatever it is. So the it first evokes gonna, an emotion. It, it evokes emotion, emo- connection. Exactly. And connection. And that's what you want because that recruiter, that hiring manager, that business owner is looking at thousands of LinkedIn profiles. And so you want yours to stand out. So creating a background image that stands up, that evokes emotion, that makes them feel a kinship or a connection is is really important. Obviously, oh. Oh, can I add also, what's yeah. so good about Canva and PicMonkey yeah. is that because people don't always get the sizing right, the yes. wonderful thing about these two platforms yeah. is they actually help you to create just the right size. And that exactly. way you don't get cut off because you've got to be so careful where your profile photo is. It might cover yes. something important that you want to show in that background image, yes? Yes, exactly right. That's exactly right. And yeah, and and speaking of things you want to put on that photo, I'd I'd put your contact info on there. Um, you know, it's it's not hyperlinkable. People can't click on it and go through to your website or go through to your phone number, or go through to your email, but you can put it up there. And you might create an email or a phone number that you can easily track so it might be like 
you know, LinkedIn Joe at gmail.com and you might use a Google voice number um, just so, you know, you don't get some spammers mm. auto dialing you uh, left, right and center, but make your, make yourself easy to, not easy to don't, not easy to get, but easy to contact, right? Don't play easy exactly. to get, but, yeah. but do be contactable. Um, and then in the title section, some of you won't have titles because you've already left your job. Um, or even if you know you're going to be leaving your job for a new one, you want to use that headline section, which is right underneath your picture, to talk about, you know, who you serve and how you serve them. So not so much, you know, if I said CVO of Vengresso, you're like, first of all, what's a CVO and why is she selling soup, right? So that would be, be completely <laughs> useless. I want to use that space to let, you know, B2B, uh, B2B business owners, uh, you know, know that we help them with their social selling or something like that. Mm. Here, but, here's, yeah. where I, here's where I want to read out your okay, one, okay, <laughs> because it's a good one. Okay, so we've got, hang on, I need to put my glasses on for this. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad you're doing it because honestly, yeah. at top of mind, I don't know what it says. I know I got some yeah. hashtags in there and it says, first of all, it's got Vivica Von Rosen. That's you. Okay. Your cover yeah. image is amazing. It says, join the digital sales transformation movement. It's it's sort of dark colors with a bright pop of orange yeah. and white. Amazing. Lovely Van Gresso <laughs> tick, tick in the logo. So it all is yeah. very powerful. There's a really <laughs> vibrant profile photo of you laughing, very warm. See your eyes. Nice, nice <laughs> smile. And then the, the tagline for Vivica is LinkedIn expert and author international keynote speaker, Forbes 20, top 20 most influential, hashtag personal branding expert, LinkedIn content for sales enablement expert, LinkedIn learning author, and hashtag social selling. Now, that is using all of the... That's using characters. all the spaces. But it's so good because they're all, it's all SEO. It's all SEO. It's all they're, SEO. They're all searchable terms. So, yeah. so learn, learn from Vivica von Rosen, folks, um, because you've got this space there. It's available yeah. for you. Use it. Yeah. Oh, and the go. ninja tricks. Yeah. Yeah, the ninja trick for you listening in. So if you try to do this on your computer, you're limited to 120 characters. But if you do it on your cell phone, you get 200 characters. So that's how I got all that in there. It looks it looks really amazing because, you know, you're going to be looking for different things and you're going to keep popping yeah. up. Yes, yeah. really good tips. And tip number three. <laughs> Tip number three, um, and I kind of skipped this one, but let's go back to it because you mentioned it and it's important. Have a photo up there. Now, recruiters are supposed to turn that off. They're not supposed to look at it, but are they? Are they not? I don't know. Um, but nonetheless, there are other people who you're going to engage with um, within the company other than the recruiter, and you have to look like yourself. You might look as like a slightly ver better version of yourself with good lighting but uh, and, and a filter, <laughs> but, um, but you still need to look like yourself because when you meet someone for the first time on Zoom, or on Skype, or face-to-face -face at their office, or at, you know, at a conference, or at a trade show, if you do not look like your picture on LinkedIn, so either if they're researching you before you meet, or if they research you after they meet, and you don't look like your picture, at least mostly, there'll be such a disconnect there that you will actually detract from that relationship that you've just created or built. Whereas if you do like look like your photo, you know, it just emphasizes, oh yeah, that's Vivica, that's Jane, that's Albert, that's Jeremiah. Um, and, and so then you get that face name connection. But if, if they see somebody else up there, there's a huge disconnection and, and it builds in mistrust. And that's like the last thing you need if you're looking for a job. So make sure that you've got a photo of yourself. Make sure it's professional. Make sure you're looking at the camera. Make sure it's like you're smiling. And if you, you don't have to go over, like mine's a big smiley picture. I change it up once in a while, but that's what I'm known for. But a smile, some kind of, don't look like you want to eat the person is what I'm saying. <laughs> Can I share a funny story? I was, I was meeting a client who contacted me and they wanted to meet and we, some, you know, yeah. connected on LinkedIn and so we yeah. were catching up and I was in, in the coffee shop looking for him. I, I, I didn't see, you know, this person. No. And then he recognized me because I, I look like my photo, basically. Yeah. It's not a glamour shot, the photo that I have, but it's me. And then I looked at him and I went, is that the person I'm supposed to meet? I said, you don't look very much like your photo. He goes, oh, yeah, I've got to update that. That was when I had hair. Yes, exactly. 
exactly. <laughs> no. I, thought, like, I wasn't looking for someone who was bald. <laughs> so, so okay. Mm, so before I got married, right, mm. I was on I was on Match.com. And can I tell you how many people misrepresented themselves? You don't want to do it on Match.com. <laughs> like, they're going to learn what you look like eventually, folks. And you don't want to do it on LinkedIn. <laughs> That's hilarious. Yeah. That is not the first time I've heard that story. Oh, that's so <laughs> Isn't funny. It funny. Uh, and, okay, now because you are such a mine of information, yeah. I know I know that time is short. For B two B, what would be your yeah. big top tip for those who are yeah. thinking about going into entrepreneurship or are in entrepreneurship, running their own businesses? What's the best tip you would provide for yeah. leveraging LinkedIn? I can't give just one. So let me try and give one inclusive answer. Okay. <laughs> um, so first of all, we kind of mentioned it earlier. You, your, your LinkedIn profile needs to focus on your buyer, not yourself. Even as a job seeker, you're, you're focused on the person who's going to hire you, the type of company that's going to hire you. And certainly as a B2B um, entrepreneur or even B2C entrepreneur, it doesn't matter. As a person on LinkedIn, you're, you're, your profile needs to be focused on the buyer or on the prospect. It needs to be buyer centric. So, um, in being buyer centric, see how I'm wrapping this in. It needs to be a resource, not a resume. Even job seekers, mm -hmm. your LinkedIn profile needs to be a resource where you are providing value, where you're sharing links, where you are talking about their points of pain and how you solve them and how you've helped other people solve them. And that goes no matter what you do or why you're on LinkedIn. That's you, you always want it to be prospect centered and you want it to be a resource um, and you want to use all the space, right? So you've got 12, uh, 120 to 200 characters in your headline. You've got 2000 characters in your about or your summary section. You've got 2000 char characters in your experience section. And by the way, if you're looking for a job um, and if you're say out of college and you don't have a lot of jobs, it doesn't say jobs, it says experience. So what kind of experience can you pull in? Or if you're looking for a job in a new arena, what kind of experience do you have in that different industry that you can pull in? Because it doesn't say jobs. So if you've got a blog, if you've got a podcast, if you've got a book, if you've got done a project with, if you've been a contractor for, um, you want to pull that in and kind of beef up your experience in the industry that you want to move into. So similarly, if you're, if you're um, an, a B2B entrepreneur, and especially if you're trying to position yourself as an expert, as a thought leader, you know, before I had the social media examiner and all the books, I had my blog. And so, you know, I was an author of LinkedIn, the LinkedIn to business blog. And so I would actually pull in under the publications, you know, each blog that I did to like kind of make me look like I really knew what I was talking about. Eventually I went with, you know, real publications, but at the time I didn't have any because there was no one who had much on Leo. There were no, not a lot of other LinkedIn speakers or trainers back then. So don't worry about going into a new industry, a new arena, a new country, Oh my gosh, I would love to move to Australia or New Zealand. Come uh, I'm, you're very <laughs> welcome. <laughs> my friends have a place on the Gold Coast and I'm like, I'm going to visit and never leave. Um, it's, you know, so when you, when you're opening yourself up to these new opportunities, whether it's in business or, or looking for a job, you it's probably not completely out of the blue. There's probably a reason why you're looking in that area or, or in that industry. Pull that experience in. Pull that experience in while fashioning your profile to be focused on them, not yourself. I 100% agree. It's not just jobs that you put in that experience no, section no. because a lot of my clients, they say, oh, you know, but I wasn't paid for that. But if it's valuable experience, it demonstrates leadership skills or community right. involvement or whatever it might be. Uh, for example, there's one thing that I do is whenever I um, I speak, I don't put all yeah. of them down there. But right. even though it was, you know, a talk at lunchtime yeah. uh, or say in the evening or whatever it yeah. might be, Put that in there because, you know, it's the topic that you're talking on that, that's so important too. That's absolutely right. And especially in things like projects and publications, you can link yourself to other people, other thought leaders. So like I did my book, my second book with um, Dana Steele, who's this amazing um, author, speaker, just a dynamo. She's got, she's got her own press, I mean, and she's got about 
22 or 42 other, you know, 101 ways to rock um, books. And so, yeah, I'm going to pull her in when I'm, you know, when I added my book as a publication, pulled her in as another author. So, and for those of you who, who come from a university background, you know, you can pull in the uh, other authors from other, um, you know, other authors into that area. Same thing with projects. And it then aligns you with these other experts. So mm. why not? <laughs> Fantastic suggestions, Vivica. You know what? I'm going to have to have you back because ah, there's, okay. <laughs> there's so many tips that people would love to find out from you as well. So now I've already had you for over half an hour now. I'm so <laughs> lucky. Thank you so much for your time. My pleasure. And are there any parting thoughts you'd like to leave us with? Yeah. So do have me back because we didn't even touch on content and that's so I know, important. I know. But we'll do that next time. We'll yeah, do that next yeah, that, time. So. That would be great. And actually, so, Vivica, what I'm going to do yeah. is uh, in my show notes in janejacksoncoach.com, yeah. I'll have all of the links so that people can find you. Easy. Mind you, if you just type in Vivica, you know, she's going to turn up. Or <laughs> so that'll be, but your final parting thoughts for us. Yeah. Well, and, and I just, because we talked about profiles, um, and I want to give you all um, some resources. If you go to Vengresso ebook, V R, just one S, V R, Ven, how do I spell my own company? V E N G R E S O E B O O K. VengressoEbook.com. We've got a free ebook. Um, it's ungated uh, as to everything you need to do to um, update your LinkedIn profile. So whether you're in B2B sales, whether you're a job seeker, whether you're marketing, download the ebook. It's, it's, gold and you don't have to pay for it. Um, and then the other, uh, the other tool that goes along that with that is, um, if you go to Vengresso banner, V E N G R E S O B A N N E R, um, dot com, it'll, it's the templates for both the personal profiles and the company pages. Cause we also didn't talk about company pages for those mm. of you who are just starting to start your own business. Um, so I'll have to come back two more times. So <laughs> <laughs> you can be a regular, <laughs> I can be a regular, the quarterly LinkedIn expert show. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so those, those, those free gifts. Um, but, but yeah, my final thoughts would just simply be, you know, use LinkedIn to develop your personal brand, position yourself as a, a thought leader in your industry and as a trusted advisor, whether you're looking for a new career, whether you're looking to build a business by doing that, it puts you on a different level than everybody else out there. Who's just got a resume on LinkedIn. Mm, and you are the trusted advisor. <laughs> so there you go. Thank you so much, Vivica. You are just a joy to have on the show. Thank you for sharing oh, so many valuable, valuable nuggets for everybody. And <laughs> thank you. We will be back, I need to tell you. So, yes. So toodle pip for now. Thank you so much, Vivica. Bye, everyone. You've been listening to Your Career Podcast with Jane Jackson. If you enjoyed this episode, please leave a review on iTunes. I'll love you for it. And as promised, here's the link to your free job search guide. Go to www.thecareersacademy.online forward slash free job search guide. Too easy. Or go to my show notes and the link will be there. So hop over to janejacksoncoach.com forward slash podcast. And remember, until next time, believe in yourself and create magic. magic.